of all, it's great to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you in person because being a photographer myself, I love knowing the mindset of a photo other photographers as well. Uh, with Natural Geographic featuring you in this show, photographer. First of all, what was it like to say yes, for one, and two, the, the access? Because we're not used to having people around us when we're taking photos. And now you have video cameras. <laughs> what was it like to allow that access behind your life? It had to be a very thoughtful response. When Jimmy and Chai came to Paul and to, to me to ask us to do this, we knew that it was going to be a many month commitment of having people around your life from the moment you wake up all day long for many, many months. And it was. So we were very intentional saying yes. We knew that because it was Jimmy Chai and Chai Vazerhali directing this, um, they had just won an Oscar for Free Solo, and we knew that they're so capable. Jimmy's a photographer himself for National Geographic. So we knew that he understood that we could not have cameras interfering with our work. So it was a calculated decision, and yes, it took many, many months to do this. It was so intense back and forth the collaboration on you know you know how it is yeah. you know they need to pick up audio mm -hmm. they need to have more mm -hmm. photos they need it was a lot of work mm -hmm. was it worth it absolutely mm -hmm. your images are so special too especially with your focus your focus is oceanic you. conservation uh how important was it for you to allow this to be able to have them videotape it in order to, to not only teach but send a message on what's going on in spaces that a majority of people will never have the access to be at. Thank you for this question, because it was a huge part of the calculation. We knew mm -hmm. that National Geographic is going to throw a lot of their marketing power and their brand behind this series. And it's not for ego, we don't care about that. But if you can shine a light on how dire the, the situation is for the ocean and for climate and for the planet, I think the media doesn't want to focus on it. <laughs> Did you watch that Leonardo DiCaprio movie, Don't Look Up? Because it's inconvenient and it is not a fun story. Mm -hmm. But we are in such a desperate situation. And the other side of the story, those who continue to you know, extract and exploit and make and profit from the rest of us, would like for it to stay that way. Mm -hmm. So you need to shine a spotlight. And for me, that this is the opportunity. And this is a way of taking external education. Education, especially for a younger generation where there's classroom education, but that external education, that's mm -hmm. where, first of all, National Geographic, for years since I was a kid reading the magazines, has really evolved and reached out to these new platforms, these new experiences, and going along with the digital divide that we have today, yeah. reaching those younger people, reaching the older people to learn, yeah. to be a, kind of a teacher, in an unbound classroom to younger students. What has that been like for you to have young kids now looking at what you do and asking the question, how, how do I be you? Isn't it an odd thing to be? <laughs> because absolutely the inspiration for me came from the pages of the Yellow Magazine. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who had the great opportunity to receive it monthly, it was a window into the world. Mm -hmm. And it opened all sorts of horizons. And yes, it was an amazing education into things that we were not learning in the classroom. I never set out to be a National Geographic photographer. It happened by circumstances of what my passion is. It took me to the magazine and it took me into the pages of the magazine as a writer, as an explorer, as a photographer. And it was, it was not an easy journey, you know? Mm -hmm. If you want to do this work, you have to know that it's a long, long journey. It's mm -hmm. going to take many years of learning how to be the best at what you do. Mm -hmm. But when you get there, the reward is so enormous mm -hmm. because it's not for your ego, it's for the opportunity to communicate at that scale. Mm -hmm. And so I get that question asked the most of any other. How do I become you? Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> I was, I was trying to answer to everybody in each mm -hmm. social media. I ended up doing a master class mm -hmm. on how to do what I do. Mm -hmm. There's so many young people that are asking themselves that question. You know, what's my first step? How do you buy your equipment? How do you insert yourself into the story? It's all in my master class. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's where we have to get down to the nitty gritty and the technical side of totally. photography. Uh, so we could segue into that. Uh, 
we're both of a certain generation and age where we learned on film. Yeah. Now, literally, computers that we had growing up are in our phones. The mm -hmm. processing power is in there. What has it been like for you in this transition from film to single lens reflex, double lens reflex, to now mirrorless cameras and phone photography? Have you seen the difference and also the advantages, disadvantages to that? What a lucky, lucky thing for some of us who are a little older to have had that education in analog cameras and analog film processing and printing. Because I had the opportunity to do all that, when digital photography finally came through, for me it was just that, oh, okay, I'm not doing this with chemicals anymore, I'm doing it in a digital darkroom. And that has been my approach the whole time. I think today everybody thinks they're a photographer. And yes, everybody can make pictures and there's cameras everywhere. We are holding one. The difference between that and being an artist is your intention. And that intentionality of where your work is going to be presented and, and what, what is it trying to say, that's what separates uh, you know, the, the craft from the art. Exactly. So I am going full circle back. <laughs> I, started, I started exhibiting my work in, as a fine art photographer just three or four years ago, and it's become a huge part of my business. I'm very lucky that people want to put my work on their, world, on their walls. So I started going, uh, uh, right now it's being printed digitally in a studio, but I'm going to go back and print in uh, palladium. A platinum printing you know mm -hmm. this is an emulsion uh, digital negative <laughs> this is using ultraviolet light mm -hmm. to um, to process and I'm very excited by that because that tactile experience of the photograph to me is really important the collectible aspect of something that's unique is really important the credibility of the work is really important yeah. and that's the one thing that for our younger generation who are watching right now the importance of learning like for any of my students that come in i always tell them if you're able to pick up a film for a film camera use a film camera first before you need to go into digital because you have to know how yeah to make mistakes of course and if you want to be the best at anything if you want to be lewis hamilton and race mm -hmm. in formula one you have to know who fittipaldi was and mm -hmm. who senna was mm -hmm. for photographers it's the same you need to study photography and the photographers that have come before you because they were masters of the craft but they were also artists mm -hmm. people of course like Henri Cartier Brezon and Avedon mm -hmm. and Dorothea Lange I mean YouTube has become an incredible mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. and you can study mm -hmm. the lives and the intentions of these photographers mm -hmm. and why their imagery has transcended mm -hmm. At the end of my life, I don't want my tombstone to read, she made images. <laughs> I wanted to say she created art that moved the world. Right. And that, I think that's for a lot of us, to leave a legacy of the work and what you, how some one person saw the world. And I think that's where photography and being a photographer really does, is tell you. It sees the world through your eyes. It's a revelation, right? Mm -hmm. It's the mystery. and. I remember being very young and I was like a little monkey and you know, I could climb up to the highest branches of a tree that grew in my parents' yard and I would take my books up there and read and I would imagine that planet Earth is a spaceship and that we're traveling across the universe. You know, Elon thinks he's building a machine to take us to Mars, but guess what? We're already going mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. Mars. It's We are in a spaceship and it is the dark unknown corners of our spaceship that are mysterious and we don't know how they work. We don't know what's in the bottom of the ocean, mm -hmm. what happens if we destroy it. But to me, you know, watching animals go extinct, it's like watching pieces of our spaceship fly out into space when we don't know what they do for us. Right. And then perfect since National Geographic's owned by Disney, Walt Disney, one of his things was liquid space and looking into the liquid space so and what's there and what we need. People needed to know about our own environment to put in National Geographic's completing that. We're, as we're winding down this interview, definitely have to ask, what's the camera that you have in your bag right now? What do you love shooting with? You know, I, I, I am not a camera geek at all, mm -hmm. but I am incredibly lucky that Sony has picked me up as one of their ambassadors for many, many years. Since 2008, I have seen the whole transition that Sony has taken to be one of the leading camera manufacturers. The camera that I have today continues to be the A1. I think it's a workhorse of a machine. 
But as I start printing on palladium, uh, platinum printing, mm -hmm. I'm very interested in starting to use the A7R5 a little mm -hmm. more. It reminds me a lot of what it was like to shoot with a Mamiya or another, you know, medium format camera. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. But I am not a camera geek. So <laughs> <laughs> whichever camera you have, just uh -huh. make sure you know how to use it. And Well, it's a tool. And I think that's what that's the one thing that a lot of the viewers hopefully will get is the fact that it's a tool. It's a tool that works best for you. So true. And what you're comfortable so with. So true. It's a part of you. It is. And, and you know, as we go into uh, Women's Month, is it mm -hmm. International Women's mm -hmm. Month? Um, I have been speaking a lot about the importance of women entering into the arts, photography, communications, but also science. Mm -hmm. The more our planet becomes degraded and a more unstable place to live, the more we need scientists to help us solve it. Yes. I think women bring a unique sensitivity to science that is so important. And I agree completely. <laughs> Uh, we would get into social media, but we'll save that for another day okay. and another discussion because <laughs> okay. that could be a long discussion. But thank you so much for stopping with us. Thank we really so appreciate much. it. And big fan. Uh, I love talking. Like I said, I love talking to photographers, sitting down with them I and really get it. to know what's not only in your bag, but also how your eye works. Yeah, I want to I share with the world what's in my heart, which mm -hmm. is what matters. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.